Hey, what's up? Ray here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. And if you follow me for any amount of time, you know that WordPress is the core focus of my website and channel. Most of my subscribers are learning or using WordPress. And I got to tell you, I, I get emails from so many people that are lost over basic problems. It hangs them up for weeks or months. And if I had to guess, I'd say most people completely stop before they make progress or understand anything about how WordPress is working behind the scenes. I don't want that to happen to you. So today I'm gonna to answer five of the most common questions that I see on launching a website with WordPress. And this is the biggest thing for beginners that don't know anything. You may land on the, on the wrong page here because WordPress has two domains. They have wordpress.com and wordpress.org. The quickest way to describe this is that WordPress itself is software and you can download that software from wordpress.org. And the WordPress software works on pretty much any web host across the web. So it's free and open source. You can download it. You can look at the code that makes up WordPress and edit it. So it's highly customizable, but even though it's free, you're still gonna need to pay for hosting. And that's what WordPress.com is. They offer hosting that gets you set up with WordPress, but there's one downside and that's they offer a limited version of WordPress. You don't get the full version of WordPress on their servers. And I'm not exactly sure why they do this, but you need to upgrade to a higher level package to get the full version of WordPress. So I usually like setting up WordPress on a third party hosting company and you're gonna pay a, a much lower price. My favorite company that I've used for about a decade is HostGator and they have a package that gets you down under $3 a month. One of the advantages of using WordPress as opposed to doing custom code is that it's one of the biggest just pieces of software that's out there on the web and it powers over 27 million live websites and that's roughly 35 percent of the web and it's been around since 2003 I started using it 2008 2009 somewhere in that area it's morphed a lot since then you know it's, it's gotten better and better you know they've, they've been so dominant that there hasn't even been a competitor that's close to them you know right now I would say one of the biggest ones is Squarespace and even they have a, a, a really small portion. I think they might be like 1% of the web or like a half percent, whereas WordPress is, you know, dwarfing them. And that's really because WordPress is much more powerful. Because it's free and open source, that allows software developers from around the world to add to it. Whereas Squarespace and all these other closed systems, they build in all the options in-house with their employees and they don't have the power of, you know, the large community. And right now, WordPress, they're on their fifth major version. An interesting thing about them is that with each code release that they do, they name it after a jazz musician. So the last one was Rasan Roland Kirk, who I don't know about him. The previous one, Jaco Pastorius, I do know him. I think he's a bassist that was really popular back in like the 70s. And I, I, I remember I was learning guitar and I downloaded a couple videos where he was, you know, just talking about how he plays bass. Number three here, it's perfect for blogging. It started as blog software and it's morphed into content management system that can be used for a lot of different use cases. But if you're if you're looking to run a blog, I, I don't think there's any, you know, any second choice. I think you want to use WordPress. And what makes it nice is that you don't need to know that much about design to get a different design. You know, the way that WordPress builds that in is they have their core software. And then they have these two things called themes and plugins. And you pick a theme to implement the design that you want. And the plugins are more for functionality where you can add various functions to your website. Like there's you know plugins for social media, for backing up your website, for integrating with other services. Now here is where I see the one big problem that almost everybody stumbles upon. And that's when you look at a theme preview, you know, you're browsing through the WordPress themes that are available to you. You'll see a theme preview and love the look of it, and then you give it a shot, and when you install, it's gonna be mostly blank. It, it almost looks like a blank page, and you think to yourself, wow, that's a, that's a massive letdown. What's going on behind the scenes is that the theme developer builds in options, and all themes have a different set of options. So if you're jumping from theme to theme, customizing is gonna be completely different, depending on what theme you have installed, and then on top of that, that theme preview that you're looking at has been customized for a couple hours. <laughs> you know, they, somebody went through the process of going through those custom options built into the theme. They uploaded pictures, background images, 
nice photos. They wrote a blog post. They put in a bulleted list. You know, you're, you're starting from scratch. You might not have written one post. You might not have any plugins installed. You might not have an image on the website. So it, it's one of those things like you kind of need to have correct expectations. Another thing is that themes are largely developed either to be really generic or to be really specific to one type of blog. So, you know, food blogs probably have a theme installed that you're not going to use if your blog's on Excel spreadsheets. Now, I'm in the middle of developing a 14-day training series to get you to launch your blog in that time period with all the essentials that you need. And the one thing that I'm doing is taking out design completely. You know, I think that it's much better to craft the design slowly over a period of months or even years without requiring a technical skill set before you start because you want to build the design around the content and most people try it the other way around. They want to design the website until it looks perfect before they write a blog post and ultimately they're never going to build an audience. It doesn't matter how nice your site is. People are going to connect with your message. It's not about the design. You know, I can show you hundreds of sites that have terrible design and that get tons of traffic. In this 14-day blog challenge, which I'm going to launch at some point in the next month or two, and when I do, I'll include a link in the description below and right here in the top right, I'm going to recommend that you use a free theme that is put out by WordPress, and that's called 2020. That one is completely designed around the newest version of WordPress, and I'm throwing around ideas, but what I may do is create a child theme based on that free theme that has a couple of customizations built in. But for the most part, I want the blog, your blog, to be focused on the content itself, the blog posts, and using good images. Because even if you don't have good images, it's never been easier than it is today to find free stock photos. Number four here, WordPress is not just for bloggers, like I said. It's also, I think, the best way to make a website for a small business, because small businesses usually just require informational websites maybe with a little bit of e-commerce built in because WordPress does work with e-commerce. That's a subset of plugins that you can install and test out various e-commerce systems. Now, if the business is 100% e-commerce focused and especially with shipping, there is another platform called Shopify, which might be a better option than WordPress. But still, you'll see a lot of people that run their e-commerce store through Shopify, but their blog through WordPress and they use both systems simultaneously. Regardless of what the small business is, regardless of how local it is, there's no downside, in my opinion, to building a, a small business brand online. And WordPress also makes it easy for you to build your personal brand. I mean, there's no better resume than having a blog where you write about the things you care about. And, you know, employers can do research on you and have a much better understanding of who you are as a person. Let's contrast that with them going to your social media pro profile and seeing that, you know, you're drinking every Friday and Saturday night, which, you know, may be harmless, but again, if somebody doesn't know you, they're going to paint a picture and judge you based on what they find about you online. And the same thing happens for businesses. If you get a ton of negative reviews online, people are not going to choose you when they do the research. And this is something that I've seen over and over again. I manage local client websites, mostly home service contractors along with a few personal blogs that have global reach. So I've kind of seen it from both angles. What I just recommended for the bloggers, which is kind of ignore design, you do need a little bit of design if you're going to be freelancing and building websites for somebody else. You know, if you're working with one niche, you probably can create a template or use a theme that's built for that niche and do very little customizing and make good money. And I have an entire video walking through the process that I use to get small business clients on a monthly package for managing their WordPress websites. So I'll link that up here and put that in the description below. And the last thing that I've kind of been emphasizing all the way throughout this video is that WordPress makes it really easy to start. Like I said, you're not gonna start with an immaculate design, but it's so easy to launch a WordPress website. Most hosts offer one-click installation. Some of them even come with WordPress pre-installed. But you know, one subset of people I hear from are web developers who look down on people for using WordPress as opposed to doing everything from scratch. And I have two responses to that. Number one is, if you're doing everything custom while you're freelancing, you're leaving a ton of money on the table because you're wasting your time. And the second thing is if you wanna customize, you can, you can use custom code with WordPress. You can build on top of it. 
So there's really no excuses for that mindset. That to me is a, a very negative mindset that doesn't jive well with reality. It's just somebody trying to hold over your head that you're not as smart as them. And I think that holds people back from you know launching their first WordPress blog if they're not a tech person. So I want to do the opposite of that. And one thing I love about WordPress, like I said before, is that they have amazing community support you know, across the entire internet. I found that the answer to almost any question you might have is out there. So as long as you have that curious mindset where you're ready to solve problems, and also a long-term mindset where you know you're going to have a lot of these little problems that pile up. I mean, believe me, if you're going with a easy-to-use website builder other than WordPress, that doesn't mean things are going to go smooth and you're going to get tons of leads and traffic. In fact, I think it's the opposite. You want the more powerful and flexible system. So I'm going to recommend that in probably 90 to 95% of cases, if you want to build a website, you should start with WordPress. I hope by now you see the advantage of setting up with WordPress. And like I said, it's going to take you about eight minutes of hands-on time to actually launch your website. So if you're ready to do that, I got a couple links here to help you out. The first one will take you to a video where I go through my favorite website hosting companies that you can launch WordPress with. So if you'd like to check that out, go to WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash hosting, and I will include that link in the description below. Maybe more importantly, once you get set up, you're going to need to know how to use WordPress. So this was more about the high-level questions regarding WordPress, but if you want to get into the nitty-gritty tutorials, I put together a training series that should help you out and give you a better overview of what you're going to be dealing with on the WordPress back end. So to get access to that training, go to WebsiteProfitCourse.com slash WP101, and I'll also include that in the description below. The way that I put all these tutorials together is by your support. You know, I recommend hosting. I'm an affiliate of these hosting companies, and when you set up a website, I make a small commission, and it helps me create these free tutorials as I continuously learn WordPress and show you the most important updates that have happened over the years. Like I said, I've been using WordPress since about 2009, and I started my YouTube channel, I think about 2015. So your support really helps me out there, and I appreciate everybody who creates a WordPress website because I push literally every one of my friends and family to do it. And the reason I went on YouTube was because they didn't want to do it. They weren't tech people. And on top of that, they're just not in the online world the same way that I am. So I wanted to connect with people on YouTube who are. So if you know, you're that kind of person. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to hear from you if you do sign up to this training. You can reply to any one of my emails. And if you have any questions or ideas for something that you'd like to see, you can just tell me directly or leave a comment below in this video. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this. I hope you learned a thing or two and got one step closer to launching your website. Keep that positive mindset. And I promise you, you will gain skills that you never thought you could if you do that over a long period of time.